All right, so the first thing we have to do here is we have to write a formula for g in terms of x to the second power, or x squared. So see how g of x right here, and you see f of 2x? This means that this part in the parentheses has to replace the x because it's replacing this parentheses. So 2x has to be put in place of an x. So now our new equation would be g of x equals 2x to the second power. Powers up here, x is x, f of x equals x squared. So if f of 2 of that means 2 of the x squares. So we have 2x squared. In parentheses, replaces the x. So 2x goes here. So now we can think of this for here, okay? So I'm just going to write above this what we want to think. It's a lot easier if we think this when we get to here than that. All right, so easiest way, I mean, we do this in our mind all the time. Square so negative three times negative three is positive nine. Negative two times negative two is four. Negative one times negative one is one. Zero to the second power is zero. One to the second power is one, four, and nine. Now, look at this. We are going to be making functions, but these are not going to be vectors. These are going to be a thing called a parabola. Okay. Um, so see how this is like the center and then these match one, one, four, four, nine, nine. Parabolas all do that if they're done properly. So there'll be a center point that's called the axis of symmetry, which you'll learn in another, we'll learn when I get back of this, but this part, see how they match? That's because you're going to need a point here and a point here, a point here and a point here to the axis of symmetry, which is where the parabola turns. Okay. So then we put that here. We put our negative three. So really we're thinking G of X equals two times the negative three or two times the negative three. We can get rid of that center parenthesis. Let's put a little time sign. Second power. So negative three times two is a negative six and a negative six squared would be 36. However, we can put this right into our calculators. So if we get into our y functions graph, okay, and I'll put it up here so you guys can see it. Well, maybe. There we go. And I can put x squared. Oops, that didn't do it. There we go. We want to put x squared. We go to graph, see, makes the parabola. There we go. Makes a big U. All right. So we go second function graph, and we can see the table 9410149. We don't even have to think about this. We can just put it in to the calculator. All right. We'll go to the Y. We'll get rid of that. And now we're going to put. Um, 2x squared, okay? So 2x, oops, hold on, I forgot my parentheses. Parentheses, 2x, parentheses, second power, graph. See how tight it got? That's because we have the big two in the front. Remember, it gets narrow. If there's a fraction, it's gonna get wide. And we can go to second function graph, and we get our numbers. So on our chart, we can put in 36, 16, 4, 0, 4, 16, 36. Now notice there's our 0. It's not always 0, 0 either, but this happened to be. And then see 4, 4, 16, 16, 36, 36. And if I arrowed up one more up above, if I went to the negative 4, it would be 64. Okay. So that's the chart. And then we have a bottom thing that we have to graph these. All right. So we go to graph our parabolas. And we have our 0, 0. And then we have our negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, up 1, 2, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, sorry. Zero. They stretch this thing right out. All right, so we're not even, we can't follow those numbers. Um, nine's gonna be way up because six. So nine's gonna be way up there. So negative two up four. You gotta watch the scale. As you can see, I just got caught up in that myself. Negative one, which is halfway through, up one, who's halfway through. Zero, zero, one, one, two, up four. So as you can see, it's still, here's our parabola. And it's just going to go like, shoo, shoo, okay. So it's just going right off, but we just can't plot that top one. Okay. And then our other one's going to get real narrow for this one, because we can only do a few of them. So there's our zero, zero. So we can do our negative one, positive four. So we go to here at the negative one. We have a one four and that's about all we're going to get, but it doesn't matter because it still shows the parabola and it's not a vector. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. So got to try really hard to get that scoop in. Okay. These are called axis of symmetry. Okay. But then we have to make sure we label them. So this is just going to continue up kind of like that. So this one is Y equals F of, 2x and this outer one is y equals f of x on a graph if you put more than one picture on a graph piece of graph paper you have to label at least one of them on a regents exam okay all right what else we got okay so exploratory challenge number two is the one that we're looking at next and the first thing we have to do is get the equation so it says let f of x equal this, f h of x is this, okay? So now we have to make that equation. So h of x, and we have to put all of this in place of this. So that would equal 1 half x to the second power, okay? So makes it easier, we go h of x equals 1 half x to the second power. All right, so now we got to, so if we can put this into the calculator, the easiest way to do that is just go y equals, and we'll get rid of this one, and we just put in x squared, and then you graph. There you see how it looks. I always like to look, see what it looks like first, and then we look to see our numbers, and it says what we put. So we still have the same numbers as we had before in our first column. So we have 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. We know we did it right because it's the bouncing back pattern. All right, then we go back to Y, clear out that, and we have a parenthesis, and we have to do alpha X, and that gets us the fraction boxes for the half. And then we have to put an X, close our parentheses, raise it to the second power, press graph. See how it's wider? Because remember the fraction in the front from the last unit makes things get wider. So you get wider with the fraction, you get long and skinny with the other one. So then I go second function table and I get what this is. So we put our numbers in. So nine fourths, if you want to put them in as decimals, because you are going to put them on graph paper, four goes into nine twice with one fourth left over. So two and a fourth is 2.25. Then we have our one. Then we have our quarter. And then we have our zero. It just happens to fall that way. And then we have our quarter. And then we have our one. And then if we arrow it down one more, we have our two and a quarter. And as you can see from our, our chart, we're bouncing back and forth. See right around that? See, boom, 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 boom. They match. 
Okay, now um, we'd have to graph these two equations. So having the graph paper is always handy. But here we go. All right. I still have the other one on my graph on my calculator. So we're gonna graph the we're gonna graph this second one first. So we go two one negative one a quarter zero zero one a quarter two up one and then three up two and a quarter and we still have the three um, from the first one the negative three two and a quarter and as you can see this one's got a wider stance to it and this one's going to be y equals f of a half x remember the fraction makes it longer okay and it just kind of keeps going like that you got to keep keep it curvy all right and then we go back to our thing we erase it and we make our first one which was just the x squared so then we just have our x squared and then we graph it and that other one was um we can't do the negative three nine but we can go negative two four which means we have a positive two four and then we have a zero zero and we have a negative one one and a one one so there's our parabola right there and then this one is y equals f of x now remember <coughs> if i'm going too fast just pause okay so um if they ever ask you how they're related they're like a stretched version of the other one but now um looking at the we can look at the other one which it's it's kind of a, a bit much but if we look um when we're making this one um we have a power on this and it's gonna it's gonna be it's whether or not we can put it into the equation but i think to be honest that is probably going to be enough for you to understand how to draw these in this unit okay and your homework's going to be back on the problem set so um remember rewind it if you need it but i think that'll be plenty enough and as always i love math i miss you guys